Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Board Game Brunch, my monthly Q&A. Uh, I am Crystal Pisano, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I do a couple of different things here on the Dice Tower. I do Dice Tower Tonight, which is a live show every other Wednesday with Eric Summerer. Um, and I do live playthroughs of games occasionally. I have a new one of those hopefully coming out soon. Um, I need to get that organized. And some other random content. Uh, and I would like to do more stuff, but the mostly live content is what I've been doing thus far, uh, because that is what I am most comfortable with and what I think I'm pretty okay at. These live Q&As aren't obviously very highly produced, but they're here. So I uh, hope you all are having a good morning or afternoon if you are over in Europe uh, or elsewhere in the world. I hope you're having whatever time of day it is. I hope that that's going awesome for you. Uh, I like doing these Q&As in the morning because uh, I can hopefully bring in people from a larger variety of time zones than a lot of the other content that goes out on YouTube, I think. Especially, well, like the Dice Tower here is really good about releasing videos all day, but as far as live stuff goes, I, I don't know. Tom does his Q&As at different times, so I think he's pretty good at handling that stuff. Hello, Jeff. I see you in the chat there. Um, so anybody who is here, feel free to drop questions for me in the chat. Um, I'm probably not going to answer any right away, um, but I will... Uh, come back to them later. And those can be about anything you want. They can be about board games or TV or movies or whatever. So I will answer any questions you may have. But until then, uh, I wanted to get some opinions from people. Uh, so it was recently just Easter. And there is something uh, around Easter that's very, very controversial. I'm hyping this up for no reason, but uh, that is Cadbury cream eggs. I know some people love them and some people hate them. And I wanted, here, I will actually, so for those of you who don't know what a Cadbury cream egg is, this is what it looks like. <laughs> um, so yeah, they are chocolate eggs with fondant in the middle that the fondant is white and yellow. So it looks like the whites and yolk of an egg, which like in theory and in concept doesn't sound like it would be good. Um, but I don't know, some people love these. So I'm going to drop a link into the chat uh, and I'm going to let you all vote on what you think about Cadbury cream eggs. Like you can put your thoughts in the chat as well, but feel free to go ahead and vote. Um, and I'm going to vote in the poll too, even though I created it because, well, I'm allowed to do that. And we'll see what you all think. Uh, I might post that link a couple other times for when people are filtering in later in case they don't scroll back up in the chat and see my original comment with the poll. But uh, yeah, I know that uh, some people like are viscerally opposed to Cadbury cream eggs. And in case you hadn't figured out, by the way, the fact that I own this, I own? Do you own candy? I have this. I have some candy. Um, I love these. I love them so much. And I, um, I've been dieting on and off for all of 2019. And I am going back on my low carb diet uh, next month, next week. But these were on clearance after Easter, and so I bought a few of them, and I just, I love them. And here's what's cool about candy and people's opinions on it. <laughs> like, some people are like, oh my gosh, how could you not like this? But the thing is, I'm kind of glad that other people don't like certain types of candy that I do, because then that means if it's around, they won't eat it and I get more of it. Does anybody else feel that way? I'm like that with banana Laffy Taffies as well, or banana flavored candy in general. I know a lot of people hate banana flavored candy and I love it. So like if you buy a variety pack of Laffy Taffies and everybody else is like, yuck, banana, that means I get all the banana ones and that's a good day. So um, we are, <laughs> there are a bunch of people voting so far. It looks like we're split 50-50 right now between yay, yay, yay and gross with a couple of people saying that they've never had one or are indifferent to them. Um, Jeff says he likes the caramel eggs more. It's weird. In life, I love caramel. But when it comes to Cadbury cream eggs, I want the cream eggs. I don't want the caramel ones. I don't know. Um, I'm going to stretch the chat out so later when I come back to it, I'll be able to see things better. But so a couple other things that I wanted to talk to you all about. Um, 
Well, first off, for those of you who do watch Dice Tower tonight, you know that sometimes Eric and I play a modified version of the board game Just One. And I keep talking about how I don't own a copy of the game itself, which to me felt a little bit wrong. Obviously, I'd played it before and I loved it, but I just didn't have a copy of my own. Uh, well, this past week, Amazon had a sale on board games and Just One was included. So not only did I buy one copy of Just One, I bought two. <laughs> and I really, really hope that YouTube picks this for the static thumbnail <laughs> for this video, because isn't it ironic to see two copies of Just One? That Right? That's funny. <laughs> So I now own two copies of this game. And the reason I own two is because of some of my friends online who had more than seven people and wanted to play just one, but it only goes up to seven. So they combined two copies of the game and played just two, where only one person was guessing, but there were two different words that they had to guess. And then all of the other players had their little marker board in front of them and they had to give, they or they could give clues for either word. And you didn't know which word everyone else was gonna pick. Apparently it was pretty difficult, but it sounds awesome. So I figured it was really cheap. It was like 16, 17 bucks, I think, for a copy. And so I just bought two of them. And also, you know, I've been talking about this game a lot on Dice Tower tonight. So I uh, figure I should, you know, support the company via Amazon. That's probably not the best way to do that. Buy from your friendly local game store if you can. That is a good thing. And I try to do that most of the time. Buy from, or at least like other online game stores, not just mass market. Um, so yeah, that is something important to note. Um, so Kabuki Kid asks, have we considered a third person for Dice Tower tonight? I know that Tom wanted to back away, but having three was a good dynamic, not saying that just you and Eric aren't good. Well, thank you. Uh, Eric and I do have a lot of fun together, and we have considered bringing on a third chair. Um, the struggle with that is it is a regular commitment, and we wouldn't want to add something else to the already busy schedules of most of the Dice Tower employees, um, you know, it is, it's not a ton of work, but it is a lot of work to put together the episodes of Dice Tower tonight, especially for the person who is planning the trivia game and things like that. And we have to prep all of our notes for our discussion topics and what games we're going to talk about. So putting an additional strain onto someone else's schedule has been something that we haven't gotten into a place where we felt comfortable doing. Um, and we could have rotating guests and have somebody different every episode, but there's a lot of logistics in that, uh, making sure that somebody's available, a different person is available. Um, there's just a lot of stuff. And Eric and I have gotten into a pretty good groove. So all of this is a non-answer to say, yes, we've considered adding a third person. We've considered that being one person all the time or a variety of people that come and go. Um, and we just haven't quite figured out what that's going to be. And since our dynamic is working pretty well, we are just going to stick with that for now. So, but we're always happy to hear feedback. Um, if you all have feedback for me about Dice Tower tonight, this show, anything else that I do on the Dice Tower, you can always email me. My email address is crystal at dicetower.com. And that's easy enough. Um, uh, Otter has a promoted comment that he just threw in there. He said, I'd love to see you, Mandy, and Suzanne as a trio. I would love that as well. Um, and we have been talking about doing something with actually Mandy, Suzanne, Ambi, and myself all together. Not a regular thing, possibly. But I, I don't like being vague because I know that that's just, you know, annoying. But I can't be more specific at this point. Um, because I'm not 100% sure it, what's going to happen. Um, so we will we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to do some content with Mandy and Suze on the video channel. Uh, and Ambie is interested in doing that as well. So, um, and I'm sorry, a lot of people have been saying hello. Richard says hello. Netters says hello. Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to see you this morning. So yeah, so I, I was just showing off my two copies of Just One that I bought during the sale this week. Um, and then that actually like reminded me that I, this is not the first game that I've bought two copies of. So back whenever it came out, which now I don't remember, two years ago? I can't remember. King Domino. 
hit and made a big splash. And for the record, I have not heard a lot of people talking about King Domino recently, even though it won the Spiel des Jahres, right? Oof. Anytime I do a video in early in the morning, my brain doesn't work. And so unless I'm Googling things, I'm not sure of anything. It won. It won the Spiel. I, won I thought it would win and it did. I'm pretty sure. But here's what's awesome about it. Or here's what's not awesome about it. When you play with two players and you only have one copy of the game, you eat. Okay. So, oh, okay. <laughs> my, I, my thoughts are so disjointed right now. I literally can't form a coherent sentence. Okay. Backing up. In King Domino, when you play with four players base game, you make a five by five grid in your kingdom and everything is great. You use all of the tiles in the game so you know exactly what's potential and you're fine. If you play with three players, you have to remove a small amount of the tiles from the game. So there is a bit of luck or randomness added in in that some of the tiles are removed randomly and you don't know which ones they are. In a two-player game, it gets even worse because in a two-player game with the normal rules where you're building a five-by-five five grid, you only play with half the tiles in the game. So in theory, one player could end up with a greater advantage based on what tiles they draft and which tiles got removed from the game. Does that make sense? Because usually when you're playing with all the tiles, if somebody is like building up a lot of the water area or the like mines or whatever else, you can, when those tiles come up, you can kind of be like, oh, okay, I'll take these ones with the crowns on them so they can't add any more points and now I get some points. But if the only ones that come up will go to one player, then they might have a significant advantage. I do not like playing this game two players with half the tiles. But what's nice is in the rules, in the base game, it says that you can build a seven by seven grid when you're playing with two players and you use all the tiles. So if I'm playing this game two players, I literally always do that, even if it's somebody's first time playing the game. And a seven by seven grid uh, is a little bit more of a spatial puzzle to figure out when you're building it out. And I always usually end up throwing away at least one or two tiles at the end because they won't, I can't legally place them. But yeah, if you play King Domino two players, I highly recommend just jumping into building a seven by seven grid because mechanically or like strategically, while the, the spatial aspect is a little bit harder to figure out, it's not any more difficult to do mechanically. So all of that to say, the 7x7 seven seven grid is a lot of fun. And the designer of the game said when after the game came out that you could take two copies of the game and combine them. So that way you could do the 7x7 seven seven grid with four players. So of course, as soon as I heard that, I bought a second copy of the game. <laughs> Uh, so I would love to know from you all what games, if any, do you own multiple copies of and why? Because this kind of just reminded me, I was like, oh, I was like, are these the only two that I own two of? Um, oh, no, they're definitely not because I own two copies of Strike as well. But the reason I own two copies of Strike is not because I need to combine them, but because I'm terrified about something happening to my first copy and I needed a backup. Also, it's just fun to have two. But yeah, so there's at least three games in my collection that I own two copies of. And yeah. Oh, Kabuki says, played King Domino two player once. The other player didn't want to do the seven by seven since it was their first time. I can see how that, like, people usually hear, like, normal version and advanced variant or advanced version, and they get scared. And in the case of King Domino, it's not that bad, and it's not that different. So, uh, and I'm going to drop the, a link to the poll in the chat again, back to our Cadbury cream egg thing. So if you haven't voted about your opinions on Cadbury cream eggs, that link is in the chat again, um, so we can get some more opinions there. Right now, yay, 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 and gross are tied. So we, we need a definitive uh, brunch opinion on Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, also, my husband uh, was in London this weekend for the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour, and he saw a poster for Cadbury Cream Egg McFlurries at McDonald's. And I nearly lost my mind when he sent me the picture. If anyone has had one of those, I would love to know if it's actually good because like, are the eggs, are there little eggs and are they intact or are they like broken up? Is the fondant mixed into the ice cream? I don't know how it would work, but I'm very curious. <laughs> so, um, I wonder if there are other games in my collection that would benefit from having multiple copies. 
it's really hard to say. I think there are cases where sometimes we have more um, more players in a group than a game would accommodate. And having two copies would mean everyone could play the same game at the same time, even if they weren't playing with each other. But I don't think I necessarily need to facilitate that most of the time. We did have a week at game my game group uh, two or three months ago, I want to say, where two different people brought uh, Quacks of Quedlinburg, and we ended up with two different groups playing that game at the same time uh, because it's wonderful. Also, is that coming back into print anytime soon? I would really like to finally get a copy of that. I want Quacks of Quedlinburg. Um, and of course, I need a copy of Wingspan, and I don't have that yet. But I told my friend that has it here in Vegas, basically, if he ever has room in his board game bag and wants to bring it, I will play it again. Because I only got to play it twice at Dice Tower West, and I loved it, and I really want to play it more. Also, I saw some up oh I, 3D components for it. I don't even know if I'd be able to find this if I Googled it. But like little tiny pastel birdhouses that you could use to replace the action cubes. And I want those, and I want the upgraded components from Meeple Source. I want to trick out my future copy of Wingspan. So it is just great. Um, and for the record, I know some of you may have asked questions that I skipped past as you all are talking. I'll kind of scroll back up and make sure that's the case. But I am trying to catch some stuff as it happens live. Like Kabuki Kid saying that there was a Peeps flavored International Delights coffee creamer. Uh, I have not had that, but um, Dunkin' Donuts recently had a Peeps uh, flavor swirl, and I did try that, and it was wonderful. <laughs> it wasn't as sweet as I was expecting. Um, it was definitely sweet, but not, like, cloyingly so. Um, so that was good. I really... I'm a fan of Dunkin' Donuts as far as coffee goes. I know it's usually... People either like Dunkin' or Starbucks. It feels like there's not and in between there, as far as those two, at least for here in America. Uh, I know up in Canada, Tim Hortons is a big thing. Um, but it seems like in America, most people are either Team Duncan or Team uh, Starbucks, and I am Team Duncan. I will drink Starbucks if I have to, like if I'm at an airport and that's all there is, especially now that they have their blonde roast. That actually isn't as bitter, and so I like the blonde roast better. Um, oh, and Dan Cheston says, that look at Etsy for wingspan uh, stuff, lots of cool options that are better than the Meeple Source components. Those Meeple Source components are pretty cool. So, oh no, Otter says the Cadbury fondant wasn't good with the ice cream. I can I can kind of see that. Like Cadbury cream eggs don't feel like something that need to be combined with something else. They feel like they're literally just good on their own. Also, I always keep Cadbury cream eggs in the fridge, um, so that way when I eat them, the fondant in the middle is a little bit more solid. Like it's not completely solid from being in the fridge. I think if you put it in the freezer, obviously it would freeze, but in the fridge, it just makes it a little bit less runny. <laughs> so when you bite into the cream egg, you're, it's less of a mess basically, which is good. Um, so since I was talking about King Domino, um, it's one of those games that when I bought it, I was playing it a lot. Um, I played it a whole bunch of times right after I got it and it was just nonstop all the time. And then I think, I don't know if I burned myself out on it. Maybe I did because I kind of stopped playing it for a while, but it, um, it wasn't hitting my table. And I recently was just like, oh, I haven't played King Domino in a while. I should put it back in my big game bag. And I did, and I took it to game night. I'm just showing off the tiles for those of you who haven't played King Domino. Um, this one was getting so much buzz and I feel like people just aren't, haven't been talking about it recently. And maybe because of people like me who kind of burned themselves out on it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I put it, pulled it back to the table this week and I just had a delightful time with it. It really is just so much fun. Um, I own a copy of Queen Domino as well. So technically, I guess I almost kind of own three copies of the same game. Queen Domino obviously is a little bit different, but um, I regret buying Queen Domino. And that's not to say that Queen Domino is a bad game because it isn't, it's fine. But I played Queen Domino bought it. I've never played my copy of it. I don't think, or no, actually I have. I played it once or twice right after I bought it. I think I taught it to a couple people, but it's fine. It 
takes something away from the simplicity of King Domino that I really love. And I feel like I just don't need to own it. And I was expecting to like it more because it adds in a couple more interesting things. But I've found that it is often easier for one person to run away with the win in Queen Domino. And I'm not quite sure why that is. Like, I've only played it a handful of times. Um, but yeah, so I own Queen Domino. I don't know if I'll ever play it again. Although I have a few games like that, that I kind of, I get excited about a thing. I play it the first time and I like it and then I just want to buy it. And I don't, I sometimes think I need to take a step back and be like, okay, I enjoyed playing that game, but do I need to own it? And since I already owned two copies of King Domino, I probably could have gone, okay, I own King Domino. Queen Domino was fun, but I don't need to own it. And I didn't do that. I just bought it. So, um... Somebody else said Cadbury cream eggs must be from the fridge. Yes. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one that keeps them in the fridge. Also, it kind of makes me feel like I can hang on to them longer. Um, I mean, the chocolate would probably last for a while in the cupboard, but I think in the fridge it'll hold up more. And that's good because you it's harder to get Cadbury cream eggs most of the year. And so I can, you know, keep them in the back of the fridge as a special treat for later in the year. Uh, there was a year, I don't remember how many years ago it was. Um, I think it was like at least five or six years ago now. Um, my husband and I, I don't think we're married yet. My dad, as a joke, ordered a case of 50 Cadbury cream eggs from Amazon and mailed it to us. Like as a joke. But that was kind of the best joke ever because we put the box of cream eggs in the fridge and ate them for like a year. I don't know how long they lasted. It was a while. Because really, as much as I like those things, you don't need to eat more than one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> They're very sweet. There's a lot of sugar. Um, so I was, that was one of the best pranks that's ever been pulled on me, I guess. So yeah, send me 50 Cadbury cream eggs anytime anybody wants. I will take them. So uh, Nelson says, I think Tom likes Queen Domino over King Domino. That sounds right to me. I also think though that he, like, well, I don't remember if he was in love with King Domino. I don't think he disliked it, but I think he was kind of like, yeah, this is fine. I don't know. It's been too long since I've seen his reviews on those games, so I don't really remember. Um, I am going to scroll back up and make sure I didn't miss any questions earlier on in the chat. We've got enough here. I think you all are mostly just talking to each other, but um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, Jeff confirmed what I was saying earlier, that a lot of the live stuff from non-Tom Dice Towerers is in the afternoon in the U.S., which means for people overseas, they wouldn't be able to watch it live. And I think there's something neat about being able to watch a live video while it's live, not just after the fact. Uh, Anthony says, I guess I'll take a break from the newest episode of Board Game Blitz to watch this video. <laughs> I mean, it's not like they're that long, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for listening. I, our most recent episode I really liked. We So Ambie and I revisited episode 11 of the podcast, which came out in September of 2016, um, where we talked about games that were really popular that we had never played. And in the episode 77, which just came out, we revisited that topic, talked about the games that we still haven't played and the ones that we have. And we also talked about the Board Game Geek Top 100 as a whole. So if you all are interested in hearing us discuss that, um, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts and uh, look for Board Game Blitz because we had a good discussion. And I, I'm always, like, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I think we do a really good job of having interesting conversations and still keeping our episodes to 30 minutes. And that I'm very proud of. There are a lot of podcasts that are very long. And I know that time is a precious commodity. And so I'm really happy that we're able to provide interesting content in a shorter amount of time. And that's not to say that longer podcasts are bad. I listen to plenty of them. But I uh, I like that it's easy for people to theoretically fit us into their schedule. Um, let's see here. Well, lots of Cadbury cream egg talk from earlier. <laughs> Dylan Thomas says about Cadbury cream eggs that it's a curve for him that starts at yay, 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 and linear, linearly drops down to gross the more he has. Definitely. you Just one Cadbury cream egg is all you need at any given moment, I think. Um, let's see. Oh, Kabuki used to work in a convenience store, and they sold a ton of them. So, all right. Um, wait, wait, wait. Jeff's earlier. I don't, Jeff, why, why did you say this? I don't remember. 
you love Twizzlers and nacho cheese together? So I, I'm not going to hate on weird combinations of food necessarily, but because like sweet and spicy stuff goes together really well and sweet and salty stuff goes together really well. So I would imagine this falls in the sweet and salty category, but texture wise, like a Twizzler is chewy and nacho cheese is gooey. I don't get it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's weird. But you know what? That's okay. There's weird stuff that everybody likes. Um, let's see. From Wikipedia, Tim says, the cream egg is the best-selling confectionery item between New Year's Day and Easter in the UK with annual sales in excess of 200 million and a brand value of approximately 55 million pounds. I think that's the symbol for pounds. Is that what money is in the UK? <laughs> oh man, I should know that. It's pounds, right? Still? It's not the euro. Is it the euro? I should know these things. Uh, Tom asks, how is your dog? There are Easter eggs for dogs, I think. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, all three of my puppies are fine. I could glance and see if maybe is down on the table. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know where they're at right now. They're all kind of hiding. It's weird. They don't, they don't get me talking to the computer. They don't understand that. Because <clears throat> usually if somebody is talking to another person, they're very excited, they're hanging out, but me talking to the computer doesn't excite them very much. So, and maybe does like hanging out on my lap sometimes, but um, she doesn't get the camera. You guys have seen her before where she's just like, I'm trying to make her look at the camera and she doesn't understand and she just wants to lick my face. <laughs> But the dogs are doing good. All three of them could use a bath right now. I might have to do that today before Game of Thrones. Because, um, yeah, they need a bath. All right, let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Rotate. Yeah, okay, so we were talking about the, uh, ro the dice tower tonight, maybe having a rotating chair. <laughs> Hashtag not just one for my two copies of just one. Uh, so Kabuki asks, we need to know how popular War of the Spark, the new magic set, is in my house right now. Uh, well, I don't know because my husband has been in London since Wednesday. Well, he left Wednesday our time. He didn't get to London until Thursday London time. Um, but yeah, they. so he and his friends, because magic spoils their sets before they formally release, at least online, um, he and a bunch of his friends here in Vegas printed out the new set like proxies for the new set so they could practice drafting with it last weekend before the pro tour event um a lot of dedication there for the record and then yeah the pro tour was this weekend and he is on a plane currently um and will be back late tonight but yeah i uh, i don't know how popular the new set is with him i haven't asked him um he did not do well in the pro tour event so maybe not popular i don't know <laughs> Uh, Richard Saunders says he bought three copies of Crusoe Crew. Oh, so that is the the Van Ryder Games um, multiplayer choose your own adventure book thing, right? Now, I know it's not called choose your own adventure because that's a trademarked name, but whatever. I'm always going to call those types of books choose your own adventure. But yeah, it's the graphic novel adventures where you have four different books, right? So wait, why would you need, oh, me and two guests. I should have kept reading. That's awesome. I've heard that that is pretty cool. Um, I would like to play that one, actually. Um, Netters owns multiple copies of Kokoro and Number 9. Ooh, Number 9, I should buy another copy of that. Because, yeah, you could play with technically an unlimited number of players simultaneously. You just need the tiles to support as many players as you're playing with. Also, I have a sneeze stuck in my nose right now. Oh, man. Mm. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> It hurts a little bit. I hate when a sneeze goes away, but I also don't want to sneeze on the stream. So um, let's see here. I'm going to drop the link to the poll in the chat one more time for people who have wandered in. We have more people walking now than we did earlier. So let us know your thoughts on Cadbury cream eggs, everyone. Because um, Easter just happened and I have Cadbury cream eggs and I wanted to know everybody's thoughts. Um. Oh, okay, yeah, so this was before the International Delights coffee creamer, but uh, Easter candy that divides people, peeps. People either love them or hate them. 
I I guess I'm in the love them camp, but don't need them. I have heard that it is fun to make s'mores with peeps. So you take graham cracker, Hershey bar, peep, roast the peep. And then I guess because there's sugar on the outside, it would get like caramelized potentially when you, if you uh, roast it. That sounds really good. Now I really want to do that. Hmm. If anybody's had a peep s'more before, let me know because I would like to know how that tastes. Um... Jeff Rainwater earlier asked, so Wingspan holds up to the hype. I have not played it. I It's a hard question to answer because I don't, the, the hype has gotten really big and I don't know how each person perceives that level of hype. For me personally, it definitely lived up to the hype. It is the type of game that I already like and the theme is integrated so well it just works really, really well. The the length of the game, the amount of strategic depth in the game, all it's it checks a bunch of boxes for me personally. So I really, really love it. Uh, and I won't lie, the fact that it is designed by a woman is icing on the cake for me. I love seeing new game designs from women. Um, that's not going to be the only reason I play a game, but it's a cool bonus because I think that having more different people designing games is just going to lead to a wider variety of cool games. So um, Elizabeth Hargrave, uh, if you all are not aware, she actually won the um, Gen Cant game design contest last summer for her 18 card game Tussie Mussy. Um, and it was available as a print and play because of the Gen Cant contest. But now Button Shy is going to be officially releasing it in the near future, or I think they might be running a Kickstarter campaign because they usually do put most of their games on Kickstarter. And I have played Tussie Mussy and it is great. Um, it's an I split you choose type of game with only 18 cards and it is very clever. So I really like it. If you um, haven't checked it out, I would recommend it, whether that's through the print and play version or Button Shy's official version that's gonna be coming out soon, but it's fun. <laughs> Oh, now my thing skipped down. Okay, we can scroll back up. Here we go. I can get 40 of those little birdhouses for $17.22. <gasps> okay, well, I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to put this in my browser now because, wait, is it weird if I buy the, the accessories for a game before I have the copy of the game? <laughs> I feel like that's probably odd. Oh, my gosh. They're so, oh, I love them. These ones aren't as pastel as some of the others I saw, though. Like, I kind of want them... Like, are there ones that are more pastel? I feel like I saw something else. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, like the... They're still very pretty. I like them a lot. Um, somebody said... Let's see here. Oh, cream eggs are designed to be stored in the British springtime. So somewhere in the 40s and sheltering from the rain is the best way to eat one. <laughs> I don't get to shelter from the rain very often here in Las Vegas. It does not rain very often here. So uh, Richard says, supposedly you need two copies of the Arkham Horror LCG to build the best decks. I think I've heard that before as well. Um, let's see. Kabuki asks, 80s movie questions. Best action movie, comedy, horror, sci-fi, and drama from the 80s. One of each. Oof. I'm, I'm going to cheat on this only because it's hard for me to come up with that many things off the top of my head. So I'm going to look up best 80s movies and kind of just give you my best out of those, hopefully. Um, ooh, okay. Well, the first ones that pop up are all good. <laughs> I am a sucker for the 80s. Not just movies, music, movies, uh, clothing, everything. I love the 80s so much. Um, so let's see here. Ooh, okay. So for horror, I think it has to be, it probably has to be alien. And that's only because I haven't seen aliens. I've heard that that's better, right? Um, but I, I've only seen alien and I just watched alien like a couple years ago for the first time. Horror movies are hard for me to watch because I don't like jump scares and I don't like gore. I can't handle gore very well. And jump scares, my anxiety, like it's oof, too much. So 
Um, let's see for com. Okay, eighties. There are too many amazing comedy movies. Like just glancing at this list that's on Google. So much. Ooh, the thing came out in the eighties as well. I liked the thing except for one part near the beginning that I hated. Which, if you all know, you guys know how much I love um, doggos. And so, if you've seen the thing, you'll know what I'm talking about. And why I did not like part of that. Um, the Breakfast Club is good as far as dramas go. Uh, I also, I was a big fan of Dirty Dancing growing up. I watched that at just about every sleepover I had as a young person. Um, oh, Back to the Future. Heathers. Oh, I like Heathers a lot. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The Terminator. Ever, all of these movies are good. Oh, Top Gun. As far as dramas go, it's probably Top Gun. Top Gun is one of the coolest movies in that it's, it's a very like dude centric movie and chick centric movie at the same time. Like it's a stereotypical romantic, like a love story, but it's also got like cool fast jets and stuff like that, like an action movie would have. And it combines those things in a way that a lot of movies don't. So um, if I, my husband was here, he would say die hard. He loves die hard. Um, let's see here. I did not like Blade Runner. Hot take. <laughs> I did not see it when I was young. I watched it for the first time before the new Blade Runner came out. And Blade Runner, if you didn't see it when uh, you were younger, does not hold up, I don't think. Um, oh, so many good movies. I can't even. I just saw Big Trouble in Little China a couple of years ago for the first time as well. That one, though, holds up and then some. As far as cult classic movies go, Big Trouble in Little China is amazing. And I just, so good. Um, oh, Airplane. Comedies, Airplane. Probably my favorite from the 80s. I didn't even know that. I thought I would have thought that that was earlier. It's 1980, so it's probably why. But I would have probably pegged it for a 70s movie, not an 80s movie. Um, so I don't even know if I answered your question exactly, but there's some movies that I love from the 80s. Let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh, yeah. Not all podcasts need to be three hours, three and a half hours long. That is accurate. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, my uh, Craven Taco Bell, who I believe is my friend, um, Nick from Missouri, uh, says this brunch time slot is easiest for us to fit in as well. So that's awesome. Hi, Nick. Um, all right. Is that Becky? So Nick and Becky, one of them, two of them, their screen name is Craven Taco Bell. I don't, it's got, is it Becky or Nick? I don't remember, but it's, I know it's one of you, <laughs> friends. Oh, they, these are friends of mine from like middle and high school who I'm still very close with. Um, and that's really cool. I don't have a ton of people in my life that I'm close with from, for that, from that long ago, but they're kind of the best. Let's see here. Crystal, favorite convention other than Dice Tower Con? Um, that's a good question. I have not been to a ton of the large board game conventions, and that tends to surprise people because I'm actively in the hobby creating media, but uh, I've never been to Origins. I have never been to Gen Con, and those are, I've never been to Essen. Um, so those are kind of three of the largest uh, conventions that exist even in the world, not just in the U.S. Um, when you throw Essen in there. But so I have been to Dice Tower Con now twice. Um, and I've been to BGG Con once. Um, and then I've helped run what was Meeple Con, what's now Dice Tower West. Um, we just had our fifth year of the convention and I've been helping out with it for four of those five years. So I've been to it five times. Um, and then I've been to a couple other smaller conventions, um, like smaller one-off things. We had BlitzCon last year and the year before. And I've been to STG Con, which is in St. George, Utah. Um, but those are all like really, really small uh, conventions. Of all of the ones I've been to, it's kind of hard to pick a favorite. I mean, I, I have a, a big place in my heart for MeepleCon slash Dice Tower West because it is my hometown convention and because I'm involved in helping run the event. 
Um, so I think it, it has a big piece. And I really, truly, I think we've created something special in it in that it has always just been primarily about open gaming and making sure you always have a place to sit down and play games. And it's easy to find a place to sit down and play games. So I went to BGG Con for the first time this past November, and there was a larger amount of my board game friends from online, like Twitter, Facebook, wherever, at BGG Con. And getting to hang out and play games with all of those people was ridiculously lovely. But it was really frustrating that there were multiple times during BGG Con that we would wander around and try and find a table and couldn't. Like, oh, okay, main room, wow, it's packed. Let's go to the little side rooms. Oh, that one's full, that one's full, that one's full. Oh, here's a table. So like, we never had a point where we couldn't find anywhere to play, but it was a struggle to find a place to play sometimes. And I know BGG Con is moving to a new venue this year. Um, so I assume that that means more space. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, for the record. Um, and I am not gonna go to BGG Con this year, even though I had a wonderful time there. Uh, and I will miss all of the people there immensely. But um, the reason I'm not going to BGG Con is because I am going to Gen Con. It will be my very first time going to Gen Con. And I'm really, really excited. Uh, I'm also a little bit heartbroken because it means I'll be missing the Star Trek convention here in Las Vegas. Uh, and there are currently five Star Trek shows in development or airing, if in the case of Discovery, five officially announced Star Trek shows. I'm over the moon excited. Uh, and that means the convention this summer is going to be so good because they're going to be talking about all of that stuff and I'm going to miss it. <sighs> but Gen Con is going to be really awesome. I'm going to be working in the Dice Tower booth and helping out with all that stuff. So I'm really, really truthfully looking forward to that. Um, okay, let's see here. Oh my gosh, my chat jumped again. Um, let's see here. Oh, talking about, uh, so no spoilers for anyone who's just listening to this. Um, we're not going to, I'm not going to spoil anything for um, Game of Thrones, but people were saying that it took eight months to shoot the episode that's airing tonight. That is a lot of time. Um, uh, I would say, Dan Cheston, I read your comment about Discovery. Uh, I would watch season two. <laughs> and I don't want to be more specific as to why, but um, I liked se season one a lot, like very much so. And season two is even better. And it addresses some of the things that you mentioned in your comment. So um, it honestly, Discovery is my favorite show, Trek show of all time at this point. After two, after one season, I knew that it was on that trajectory, but after two seasons, it has been solidified. And it's Deep Space Nine is still like right there with it, basically. Um, but there are specific aspects of discovery that leap it above Deep Space Nine for me. Um, and it's just spectacular in so many ways. Uh, Kabuki asks, have you watched the new Twilight Zone since I already have CBS All Access? And I have. I've watched the first two episodes and they were both great, um, especially the remake. So they, for the episode number two, they remade an old Twilight Zone episode, um, the one that William Shatner actually starred in. It was, I think, it was originally called Terror at 20,000 Feet and now it's called Terror at 30,000 Feet something like that. I don't know if terror is the right word, um, but they remade it and it was really interesting. Um, and the um, the actor who plays Ben in Parks and Rec, and I cannot remember his name now for the life of me, but that actor um, is in the role that William Shatner originally had and does such a brilliant job with it. Uh, both of the first two episodes were really good of Twilight Zone and I've heard that they're it's just going to get better. So <clears throat> For those of you with a CBS All Access subscription, check it out. And if you don't have one, you should get one. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is like cutting out. I'm trying to. Oh, no, no pun included. And John Gets Games ran a 50 plus player game of number nine at Essen or Gen Con last year. And it went really well. Wow, that's a lot of number nine. Um, oh, and Netter's left earlier. I know you're gone already. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, do I have any opinions or thoughts on the issue on Kickstarter with Colossal having a bunch of projects canceled by Kickstarter? I don't really, um, only because I don't know the 
details. So it's, I, I, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I know that there was, there's, it's related to Colossal and Maple Games, like both of those companies, there's something related to them. Um, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the details, so I don't want to speculate. <clears throat> I hope that for everybody involved, both the people who want the games and the people who want to make the games, everything gets worked out. Nelson asks, how well does the theme fit with Wingspan? I have a friend who's a bird watcher who knows a lot about birds. Wonder if he would like it or look down on it. Bird snob. I am not an expert on birds, but I do know that they put a lot of time and research into making sure that the things that are available to each bird to do fit with what that bird is like in real life. And they also have actual facts about all of the birds on the cards. So I would say if he's a bird snob, he might really love this game because they put, they, they didn't just like slap some bird facts on here randomly. Like the mechanics are tied into the specific birds. Like if one bird is like, there's a bird that like, steals eggs from other birds' nests, or no, no, there's a bird that like lays eggs in other birds' nests. It doesn't build its own nest. And so like when it makes eggs, you have to put them in other birds' nests. So there's things like that mechanically that fit with who the birds actually are. So I think it's really neat. And I think that a person who is, you know, a bird snob would probably enjoy it quite a bit. Um, Shanna, Shana, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, says she loves the eyeshadow and hair. Why, thank you. I, uh, I'm just, well, I'm going to be a totally blue and purple person at some point, I think. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, for comedy movies in the 80s, Top Secret. That's a good one. Yeah, 80s was a solid decade for entertainment. Wasn't Alien 1979? Oh, Alien was 79. Aliens was 86. Oh, wow, they were that far apart? I didn't actually know that. <clears throat> well, I apologize then. I guess Alien's not my favorite horror movie from the 80s. When did The Shining come out? Is that the 70s? I like The Shining. Uh, that one's a little hard for me to watch, but let's see. Wait, no, that was on here, right? 80? Yeah, 1980. Um, the only problem with The Shining is I've heard the stories of how horribly um, uh, the female actress, Duval, right, is her last name? Oh, gosh, why can't I remember this? Come on, help me out here. IMDb what is her name. <clears throat> yeah, Shelley Duvall. I've heard that she was not treated well on set, so it makes that ugh, makes that movie harder for me to watch. Um, let's see. Yeah, John Hughes movies were the bomb in the 80s, definitely. Um, oh, Flight of the Navigator. <gasps> Jeff. Jeff, you... Okay, Flight of the Navigator is one of my favorite Disney, live-action Disney movies of all time. All time. I love it so much. I don't, like, a lot of people I feel like didn't see Flight of the Navigator. I feel like on average, most people haven't seen it. And it probably does not hold up well. But uh, it's got a young um, Sarah Jessica Parker in it. And it's got Paul Rubens in it. And it's, oh my gosh, I love Flight of the Navigator so much. I should find it and watch it. Because that movie, I haven't seen it in a long time. Really, really good. Um Let's see here. Uh, have I played the Big Trouble in Little China board game yet? I have not. I have a friend um, who Big Trouble in Little China is his favorite movie. Um, he's the one who got me to see it when it came back to theaters a couple years ago. And he owns the board game. And I would really like to play it with him, but I have not gotten to. Um, let's see here. Oh, people saying that Top Secret is underrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Raiders of the Lost Ark is the best movie from the 80s, by the way, just saying. I mean, Raiders of the Lost Ark is good. I like Indiana Jones movies, so. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Kabuki Kid is not Suzanne. <laughs> Kabuki Kid is a different person. Uh, so Otter said, we still want to see you at Essen. I desperately want to go to Essen. I really, really do. It, um... As far as going with the Dice Tower, that's not going to happen for this year. Um, it is still a possibility for the future, but it is really expensive to get somebody from the West Coast to Germany, the West Coast of the United States, to Germany. And also the time I would have to take off from work is difficult because the travel time alone, I think it would probably be essentially two days on the front end. Coming back, it wouldn't be as bad, but I'm still, the jet lag would be 
a real problem. Um, and I am already using up a majority of my vacation days every year for board game related stuff. So um, at some point in the future, if I have a job in the board gaming hobby, I imagine it would be easier to do things like Essen. But for right now, uh, it's not going to happen, at least not in 2019, maybe 2020. Who knows? We will see. Um, let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Scrolling through some talk about 80s movies. Talking about Goonies and Gremlins and more Indiana Jones stuff. Oh, saying the original um, uh, Twilight Zone episode of Shatner is a classic. Yeah, we went back and uh, Rob had never seen it. So we we after we watched the new version, we went back and watched the old version. I will admit, though, you all know, well, some of you know, I'm not a fan of William Shatner as a person uh, at all. And honestly, while that episode of Twilight Zone is great, his acting in it is skeptical at best <laughs> like the one where he's looking out the window with wide eyes like like it's just so bad so bad um um zion says hola something about argentina i assume that means hello from argentina i don't speak um now i'm gonna make myself sound dumb is it spanish or is it portuguese Argentina, Argentina. I'm trying to think what language is spoken there. I don't know, but hello to you, Ben or Zion. Then Ben right below Zion says, are you going to be at the Dice Tower retreat? I don't think I'm going to be at the retreat um, either. So Dice Tower Con is in July, Gen Con is in August, and then the retreat is in September this year, right? Um, that would be a lot of me traveling pretty far. So that's me going to Florida in July and me going to the Indianapolis in August and then back to Florida in July. That's a lot of travel. <laughs> um, so I don't think I'm doing the retreat. Um, uh, if Tom asked and wanted me to and we could make it work, I would be willing potentially, but I don't think I'm going to be. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. So if you all have any questions that you haven't asked, um, just make sure you get them into the chat soon. I know that we're I'm, I'm nearing the end of the list currently. Um, Oh, and Ambie's here. Hi, Ambie. Um, let's see here. Oh, we were doing trivia about the first PG-13 rating. Oh, here, I'm going to drop the link to the Cadbury Cream Egg poll in the chat one more time for those of you who've come in late. So if you didn't vote on whether you like Cadbury Cream Eggs or not, there's your chance to do that. Um, let's see here. What is the best escape room type game you have played so far? Uh, is it sitting nearby? It is. Hold on. I'm going to grab it for you because it's literally near my desk right now. <laughs> the best escape room board game that I have played. This one. Hands down. This one. And you can buy this at Target. It is mass market. It's super easy to get. It's wonderful. Uh, and it says uh, two to eight players. I played it with two. Me and my friend Kathy played it by ourselves and had a wonderful time with it. It is so good. I highly recommend this. And I heard that the people who made this were making another one, but I don't know if that has happened. And I want to know if it has, because this is so, so good. It, it just... I don't want to spoil anything, obviously, but it has a lot of really delightful surprises in the midst of the game um, and very clever use of components. Um, and while there is stuff that you destroy when you play this one, that it is able to be reset. So you can print off new stuff to make it resettable so you can pass it off to somebody else. So um, that is my favorite of all of the escape room games I've played. Um, as far as like the different series go, um, I would say the exit games are my favorite in general. Um, there's some that are stronger and weaker, obviously, in any of the series. But I'd say exit is probably the best. Escape Room, the game, would probably be my second favorite of the series. Um, then Unlock. And then um, wh wherever the bottom of the list is is where I would put Deckscape. And I know some people like Deckscape. I've only played one of them, so I'm technically not giving it a fair shake. Um, but I played the one that has London in the name, and it was awful. I didn't like it at all. So I just have no inclination to try the other decks, scape decks. Um, but yeah, 
Escape Room in a Box, The Werewolf Experiment, my favorite, easily. It was wonderful. Um, let's see here. Argentina is mostly Spanish and patches of Welsh. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Fly to the Navigator is still good. Okay, that's good to hear. I mean, I would like it anyway, but I do recognize that some things that I watch and like because of the nostalgia factor aren't necessarily good movies. Uh, I totally, just a couple days ago, rewatched a movie that came out about 10 years ago, uh, Repo the Genetic Opera. <laughs> it is horrible, and I love it so much. <laughs> it's so bad. It basically tried to... Like if you, you, you can't force a cult classic and that's what they tried to do. They tried to be the new Rocky horror picture show and it, they were unsuccessful in that regard, but I still love it. The music, like the songs are weird. The plot is weird. Everything about it is awkward and I still really, really like it. So, um, and that is not, that is different from the Clive Owen movie Repo Man, which came out afterward. Somehow two movies about body bodily organ repossession came out like near one another i don't think that that's that whole deep impact armageddon phenomenon but maybe like is that a topic like people are like oh yeah organ repossession we should make multiple movies about that <laughs> i do not know uh michael Cl uh, Klosser says we need a west coast retreat as well i would love that uh if we could schedule something like i know that would be way easier for ambi and suzanne and myself to do if we did a west coast retreat but then of course getting all the people over from florida would be tough um maybe we could get the murph brothers to uh organize something in la and we could all hang out with them that would be pretty fun let's see here Trying to scroll through stuff. I've got a few minutes left. Um, okay, what themes do I completely avoid? Does anything drive me away? Um, I don't know if there's anything that I completely avoid. There are themes that are off-putting to me. Um, I do not enjoy like Western themed games, like the Wild Wild West, like those are, I don't know what it is about it, but it's completely off-putting to me. And I have played some that were fine, but generally I don't care for those. Uh, zombie themes I tend to not like, but again, won't necessarily avoid. Um, I really love Dead of Winter, um, but other, other games where it's just hordes of zombies coming at you, I just find less appealing. Which is odd because I used to play a lot of tower defense style video games or computer games when I was younger and essentially a zombie game in some regards is kind of a tower defense game like lots of things coming at you hold them back so you would think I would like it I don't know what it is about the zombies specifically that I'm just not keen on but um let's see have I tried Escape Tales The Awakening it is amazing no I was actually just talking to Eric about this one on uh, Dice Tower Tonight our most recent episode um, I would love to play Escape Tales The Awakening, and I think I'll really, really love it, but I have not gotten a chance to play it. So let's see here. Wait, there's a movie from the 80s called Repo Man also? Is it about organ repossession or is it about repoing something else? How many movies about organ repossession do we really need in the world? Um, uh, and I know I was talking about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Fun fact about me. Uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show was the very first R-rated movie that I ever saw in my whole life. Uh, my parents forgot about a couple of the scenes that are in that movie, which probably are why it is rated R specifically, and uh, let me watch it. And then when those scenes came up, I pretended like I was asleep. <laughs> so that way they weren't as embarrassed. <laughs> it was funny. Um, so yeah, that was the very first R-rated movie I saw. I'm trying to think. I know what the first, oh, the first R-rated movie I ever saw in a theater was House on Haunted Hill. What year did that come out? Um, is it House on, yeah, because not the, the, the Haunting and House on Haunted Hill both came out around the same time. So 1999. So I would have been, let me do math. I would have been if I was born in 84, end of 84, then uh, 
I would turn 15 in 99. So I was 14. So my dad must have taken my sister and I to see that. Um, and I did not like that movie. I don't like horror movies, but it was fun to go see an R-rated movie in the theater. How is it that things like that stick in my memory? Like I remember my first R-rated movies. I guess, I don't know. It feels like a big milestone to a kid. Um, <laughs> Rocky Horror is a Fox movie. Fox is now Disney. Thus, for Dr. Frankenfurter is now a Disney princess. I am 100% here for that. And if someone hasn't like done fan art, of Frankenfurter as a Disney princess, uh, that should 100% happen because that sounds amazing. Um, let's see. Nelson asked, why are Westerns so unpopular now? I They've always been unpopular with me and not just games, like the Western theme. Like I've never really been keen on Western movies um, or anything with a Western theme, a wild, wild west. I don't know what it is at all. Uh, I, I think the only Western themed movie that I can say I love is Back to the Future 3. <laughs> and that's uh, obviously not, I mean, it isn't set in the old, the wild West, but it's not about that. So, um, and that movie is not the, that's the le the worst of the three Back to the Future movies. I still love it, but it's not the best. <laughs> um, okay. In the eighties, Repo Man is about re repossessing cars. Well, that makes more sense. That is normally what gets repossessed is cars, not bodily organs um let's see all right so i guess we're about out of questions here anyway so let me see i need to go check on our poll we ended up with 27 total votes uh so not everybody voted but uh a majority of people 37 percent voted yay 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 that they love cadbury cream eggs so here's to you people i've got a cadbury cream egg for you um Thank you all so much for joining me this month for my live Q&A. Um, make sure you click the thumbs up button right below the video right now, please, because it helps get this video uh, more visibility both in the Dice Towers channel and on YouTube in general. And make sure that you join Eric and I for Dice Tower tonight, this coming Wednesday. Um, we are going to be doing some fun stuff like we always are. Uh, that is at on Wednesday, May 1st. Wow, it's already May. It's May. May 1st um, at 6 p.m., Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, really early in the morning uh, if you live in Europe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you all can join me for that. Uh, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Uh, and as always, that we say here on the Dice Tower, uh, have fun gaming. Bye, everyone.